Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Gifts for Hams. Find their website at www.gifts4hams.com. Get your call sign or club logo engraved on virtually anything you want. Specializing in ham radio related gift ideas, Gifts for Hams is your one stop shop for lighted call sign displays, coffee mugs, coasters, drinking glasses, smartphone cases, and so much more. Shop giftsforhams.com and tell them Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. Ham Radio 2.0 episode, whatever it says right there. I'm tired of keeping track of these episodes when I record them, putting a number in them, and then having to change up my order and having to go back and either bleep out <laughs> the number that I say or just re-record the intro, whichever one it may be. Got my cool new uh, green mesh Ham Radio 2.0 hat. Those are on GrapevineAmateurRadio.com, by the way. So, this episode will be comparing the Shark Rife Open Spot, which everyone knows about, single antenna, and the Nano Spot, which a lot of people are starting to get wind of. Um, it's actually, if, you, if you've been on Facebook at all in the last couple months, you've heard about this Nano Spot. So, if you look at it on the website, the NanoSpot website, if you just, um, uh, Micronode is the company. And if you Google Micronode NanoSpot, you'll find it. But it looks like it's a whole lot bigger than what it actually is. It's got a screen on it, but that screen is tiny. This has no screen on it, so it's bigger than the OpenSpot screen. But there's a comparison of the two devices in size, thickness. This one's about the size of a pack of cigarettes. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, but it's not nearly as big as what I thought it would be when I got it. Um, not nearly as big as what it looks like it is on their website. But what it will do that this one will not do is this one does not do P25. This one does P25. So if you have a P25 radio, you can connect to a P25 network and also do P25. Both of them do DMR, D-Star, and Fusion. This one would do a fourth mode, P25. You can go and look at that. This is the spot, the box that the Nano Spot comes in. Nano Spot. It's just a standard box. It comes with a USB-powered cable, which uh, the power port is here, right there. It's got a USB port here. It's got a power port there. And it's got a... Uh, a mini USB port on this side right here. Um, so it comes with this power cable, this cable that has a US, regular size USB on one end and power, so you can plug this thing up in the car really easily. It also has a wall port with the same power connector, round modular type power connector, and then it comes with the mini USB cable as well. So what they say is this one's much easier to use mobile because you don't have to have... Um, it's got Wi-Fi in it. Basically, you don't have to have a separate Wi-Fi bridge to bridge it into your 4G, 3G, 4G network the way you do the open spot. So let's take a look at what the software looks like, the open spot, and the nano spot, which I have plugged in here. I don't have my open spot plugged in. I've got an open spot plugged in inside. We'll log into that in a second. I've got the screen cap going here as well. If you want to see a really great video on setup, unboxing setup demonstration of the Nano Spot, go check out my buddy Eric's video on Ham Radio Concepts. I'll put a link to it in the bottom of this blog post on livefromthehamshack.tv. He did a, a great intro, and he's got a 40,000 plus hits on it. He did a great intro of this device because the guy who runs Micronode sent him one. Now, I contacted the guy at Micronode a year and a half or two ago before the NanoSpot was ever in existence. He has another one called a Micronode, which is like 500 bucks. It's really expensive. Um, I don't know the exact differences between the NanoSpot and the Micronode, other than the NanoSpot's about half the price. Um, so I contacted the guy at Micronode. I sent him an email a year and a half, a couple years ago, um, probably probably between two and three years ago, because I'm almost at my three-year anniversary here. And I, I said, hey, I want to debut your product on my show. Would you mind sending me a sample? Well, he never replied to me. Never got a response from him at all. So somehow Eric got him to 
I don't know if he got I don't know if he got him to send him one or if he got a discount. Eric might have just bought it outright. I don't remember. We talked about this at Orlando Camcation last February. I don't remember, but Eric did a video on the nano spot and then and which exploded and it's a very good instructional video on how to set up a nano spot. There's a couple of things that Eric says in his video that I don't necessarily agree with. Not that he not that he's wrong, but just that it's not it's not as simple. He says, "Oh, you just very simple to set up, set it and go." Well, no, that's not exactly true. Um it is set it and go once you finally get it going. But uh, this is the video I'm talking about right here. Um, yeah, so this is the this is the video right here. It's got forty thousand nine hundred and twenty views at the time of this recording, and um, he he goes through and he he does a really good job of showing you how to set it up. You got so basically what you have to do is plug it in the first time and log into it with a terminal emulator program. Putty, MOBA X term, something like that will work. Most people know what Putty is. So you have to go into Putty and you have to log into the PyStar and go through a few Linux commands that are all laid out in the manual, which is right... I don't think I closed it. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, Micronode.com forward slash nano dash spot underscore user dot PDF. This is a... Just Google nano spot manual. You'll find it. It's a PDF file. And you go through these... Um, 10 steps here till you reboot it. Basically, what those steps do is they allow you to connect it to your existing Wi-Fi. Okay? So it's connected to my home Wi-Fi right now because I'm at home in the shack. If I was to go out on the road and connect it to my 4G uh, hotspot or my, my phone or my mobile um, 3G Wi-Fi modem, I would probably have to go back into that configuration menu and basically, what you, for those of you who understand Linux, you have to go into a configuration file called WPA underscore uh, hold on, I lost it. There it is. WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. Okay, so it's under Etsy slash WPA underscore supplicant slash WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. It's a configuration file. You go in there, you set your SSID, you set your password, and you save that file, and then you reboot the nano spot, and you're connected. It's not hard, but Linux scares some people. Okay? It's not nearly as easy as the open spot is. Okay? But, but, this is to allow the nano spot to get to connect to your Wi-Fi, which the open spot does not have. Okay? And then, once you do that, you are connected to, and this is what the configuration page looks like right here. Uh, it's just, you, you um, on the manual, if you go here, uh, it'll tell you to reboot. And then if you scroll down, it shows, uh, click on this URL, nano-spot, admin configure.php. And if you do that, it opens up and you log in, and the username is pi-star, and the password is raspberry, all lowercase, like raspberry pi, raspberry. Um, and then, of course, you can go in here to the configuration menu, and you can, re, uh, you can, this is for remote access password, so you can change the password, you can set up what all you want to. As you can see right here on this page, you can set up for DMR, DSTAR, YSF, which is the ASU System Fusion and P25 mode. I've turned all these off because for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just doing DMR. I need to do a video on P25 because I do so much freaking stuff on DMR, it's pathetic. I love DMR. In case you guys didn't know, this might be news to you for some of you who are just turning in. I love DMR. Little, little side note there. Um, so, you know, you can do D-Star, you can do P25, and you can do uh, System Fusion, which once again... System Fusion, or I'm sorry, P25 is not doable through the open spot. I've poked around in this menu for the last 20 minutes or so. Um, yeah, there's an update right there. It's a pretty user-friendly menu. This nano spot's fairly... Yeah, okay, so there's an update. So I clicked on update, and it's running its own update. That's pretty cool. Uh, this nano spot's fairly new. Special thanks to my buddy Steven, KG5OKB. Uh, 
Oscar Kilo Bravo. He let me borrow this nano spot. So Mr. Micronode didn't send me a nano spot, and I didn't purchase a nano spot. Uh, but Steven, KG5OKB down in Crockett, Texas, he recently put up a new uh, DMR repeater, and it's connected to my Seabridge. You can see that at seabridge.hamradio2.com. He uh, was gracious enough to allow me to borrow this nano spot for purposes of this video. I'd probably feel bad comparing it to the open spot if the guy at Micronode had sent me the thing, but he didn't, so I would say what I want to, <laughs> uh, which I pretty much do anyway. But, uh, you know, it, it, long and short of it, I think both of these devices have their good and bad faults. Obviously, obviously, the strong point for the nano spot over the open spot is the Wi-Fi. Obviously. People have been crying and crying and crying for a Wi-Fi version of the open spot for the last two years. These guys from Shark RF, by the way, little another little side note, people call this a Shark RF. That would be like calling this a Redivis instead of an RT-82. That would be like calling your mobile Kenwood V71 radio my Kenwood instead of my V71A. That'd be like calling your IC7300 your ICOM instead of your IC73. This is an open spot. It says it right there, Shark RF open spot. Shark RF is the company. The open spot is the device. So when they finally make a new device, it'll be a Shark RF blah, 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 whatever they're going to call it. Okay? So this is an open spot. It's not a Shark RF. Shark RF is the name of the freaking company that makes the open spot. Little, uh, because I get emails all the time. So, can you tell me about the Shark RF? Well, yeah, it's a company out of Estonia. What do you want to know about them? Well, no, I thought it was, no, you're talking about the open spot. That's what this is. Anyway, little rant. <laughs> um, so, everybody, you know, these guys were in Dayton in 2016, I believe it was. It was not last year. They were not there. No, you know what? I think it was 2015. I think they were, I don't think they were there the last two years. These guys are from Estonia. They were in Dayton. I believe it was 2015. Um, I didn't get a chance to meet them at that point in time, but they're really nice guys. I've traded 100 emails with them since then. And nice folks, great product, and they really need to come out with a Wi-Fi version. But the good thing about this, oh, I mean, not the only, not the only thing, but the, the different thing about this is that it has Wi-Fi and it has P25. So if you're into P25, this might be an answer for you. I am into P25. I've got an EF Johnson P25 radio around here somewhere. That Kenwood radio that I haven't plugged up in like six months. Uh, that Kenwood NX5800, it will do DMAR and P25 both. I really need to get back on that. I'm going to do that one of these days. So we're going to get back to the dashboard here. Yeah, making sure. Okay. So I can key up, and I have set a channel in my radio for color code 1. And I'm on Brandmeister, Texas 3148. And you can see the transmit right there. KC5 HWB testing on North Texas. So you can see that. And this is all the activity. Nobody, I keyed this up a minute ago. That's why my call sign was already up there. Nobody's answered me. That's okay. Um, I don't really want anyone to answer me for the purposes of this video. I'm just kind of doing a demonstration. So back when I had, if I, if I went back in here... And did, nope, if I went back to configuration and were to turn these on. Oh, there's an NXDN. Holy cow. That wasn't there a minute. Oh, shoot. You know what? I just, I just went through the update. It's got NXDN now. Look at that. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Okay. Um, YSF 2D. Oh, YSF 2DMR. I was saying a minute ago that I didn't think they did. They obviously do that now. There's a YS, Yezu System Fusion 2 DMR. So you can take like a uh, FT1. I've got an FT1D radio up there. FT1D, FT2D, and you can go into DMR. I don't see a way in here to go to make it go from DMR back to Fusion. But that's kind of cool. So if I enable these, I'll go Apply Changes. So update your stuff. I just did an update. This, uh, Steven purchased this thing a couple months ago. Two or three. He, 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 he had to wait for it. He, he waited several weeks 
before he got it, um, after he purchased it online. So if we go to dashboard now, it'll show us it'll show us activity here from all the different connections that we've made. Uh, D star, D star, DMR, down the left side here. Oh, I'm in the YSF Network Alabama link. Oh, I wonder if I can connect to the Texas Nexus room. Let me see if I can do that. That might be kind of fun. Um, general configuration. D so, so you've got your configuration menus here. DMR, D-Star, YSF. Let's go down. Uh, one thing about Yezu System Fusion rooms is they're all funky named... Like you can go in there. There's no there's no naming convention that anyone follows. You can go in here and basically name it whatever the GAC you want to, and it's uh, there. It is right there. Boom. Texas Nexus. Boom. Apply changes. APRS host. Yeah, sure, whatever. Oh, UK. No, let's go. Let's find a US. Is there a US? Tucson. I assume that's TUS. Two maybe Tucson. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not co overly concerned with that right now. Go there. And you see right here it will basically... It doesn't reboot the device, but it resets the admin page every time you make a change like that. It says applying your configuration changes right here. Go back, go to Dashboard. And now, there we go. See, I'm on the Texas Nexus room. How cool is that? N5 LUB is talking on the Texas Nexus room right now. Texas Nexus is a really great system fusion digital only network here between Dallas-Fort Worth, down to Austin, San Antonio, and down to Houston. Um, it's one of the only times I actually like talking on fusion. I don't like the AMS mode. I've talked about that before. But Texas Nexus, that's a really cool place. I've got Texas Nexus ported to my DMR Seabridge that I have on my DMR repeater. So if I were to go up here, I think, I'm going to key up my repeater on Texas Nexus, you can see, if, of course there's somebody talking right now, yeah, K5 Koi, K5 KOI, he's talking, so that's pretty cool, so the nano spot will connect to Yezu System Fusion Reflectors, there's my repeater right there, KC5 HWB activating Texas Nexus on DMR. And since someone's talking right now, I don't think that it's uh, it's listening to NXDN. Look at that. That's cool. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, those must time out after a while, I guess. Uh, no, no, NXDN. It's coming in in the NXDN now, so I don't know why it's doing that. I don't even have an NXDN radio. Let me turn that off. So this is this is kind of fun to play with, because um, I don't I don't even own an NXDN radio. Let's turn off P25. Let's turn off D Star. I don't have a D Star radio in the shack right now. I've got that Kenwood D74, but I've actually never done D Star with it. So here's yeah. So everybody, so this is what the Pi Star digital voice configuration menu looks like, and I think most of your Pi Star Raspberry Pis running the Pi Star image is going to look similar if not the same. Here is your open spot image. Now, here's something the open spot will do that I've not figured out how to do in the, well, let's go back and before I say that, let's go to, yeah, configuration. So I can connect to a pre-existing DMR server, but I can't enter my own DMR server that I have found. So like I can't enter, if I want to enter a custom DMR server, I can't do that. I can enter a Brandmeister server, a DMR Plus server, all these pre-populated ones. I need to email the guy with the Pi Star image and ask him about that. But on the open spot, I can go in here. I can go into advanced mode. There's Koei right there. And that is Fusion. And now the, the nano spot says Fusion, and it says K5KOY Koi is talking on Fusion. So it's monitoring both, basically. But I'm only hearing it through DMR because I have a Texas Nexus connection into my Seabridge, into my repeater back here. So I can go into here 
on the open spot and I can choose go into advanced mode like I said choose MMDVM and I can do add server no nope. I can go well here here I can go um, assuming that I had a DMR link or an HB link server running I could do that I could click on add server and there it would be and I can change the port so I can add my own server for a customized DMR server to the open spot I've not figured out a place to do that in here yet because all of the, in this DMR configuration menu all of these servers are pre-populated and there's no way to add there's no way to add a server in here so that's a limitation of the Pi Star network or the Pi Star image I think I don't think it's necessarily a limitation of the NanoSpot itself, but it is a limitation of the Pi Star operating system, which there's a lot of servers, and you know, and most people may not care about that, and that's okay, that's okay. But being the hacker that I am, which I'm not much of a hacker, but I want to, I want to be able to connect this thing to my C bridge, which I can do on the open spot, and I cannot do on the nano spot as of the time of this recording so like I said there are good things and bad things about one and that, this is just a comparison video I'm not gonna tell you uh, don't buy an open spot or don't buy a nano spot both of them you know what most of you guys out there that have hot spots have more than one let's face it I mean I've got like four open spots and a zoom spot and a jumbo spot and a boo stack <laughs> And uh, uh, there, there's always something. There's always something. Here we go. Let's try this. Uh, K5KOY from KC5HWB, Texas Nexus. So I'm going through my repeater right now, not through the nano spot. But the nano spot is showing activity on Fusion because I'm monitoring here you can see my call sign here YSF mode this is a DMR radio in 3 FE-7 so that's some kind of interconnector um, I don't know who that is in 3 FE is that Cor uh, is that Corey that might be Corey I don't know how he's got that connected um, through here whoa yeah I do yeah I do yeah, I do. I know why. Because Texas Nexus is a DMR talk group 31488. That's why. On Brandmeister. And now I'm going to key up North Texas on Brandmeister again through the nano spot. And now it's going to and now it's going to come up and say DMR when I key up. Yep, there's DMR KC5 HWB and you can see on the screen is testing uh, nano spot connection to uh, North Texas DMR 123 you can see it there so I keyed up my repeater <laughs> I keyed up my repeater my DMR repeater which has access to the Brandmeister talk group 31488 which is called Texas Nexus which is interconnected to the Texas Nexus Yezu system fusion room and came through the system since the nano spot is monitoring the Texas Nexus room, which is this line right here, the second line down. You can see mode is YSF, my call sign, through the N3FE-7 link. Okay? Then I keyed up the nano spot on DMR slot 2, talk group 31481, which is the North Texas brand Meister talk group. And nobody's answering me. No, people don't like me. So nobody's answering me on that. You see that one came through the net. That's kind of cool. This one came through the net. Source is net and RF. So I keyed up RF into here. And I keyed up RF into my DMR repeater. But the Yezu System Fusion saw it as network traffic. Because I'm not keying up a Yezu System Fusion repeater. I'm keying up a DMR repeater that's connected to the System Fusion via internet traffic. Let me know how, that, how confusing that is. All right. <laughs> Oh, wow. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So, um, anyway, good, uh, good devices for both 
I may have to buy a nano spot. I may have to buy a nano spot. I may have to email that guy after I put up. I'll put up. I'll email Mr. Micronode, and um, and say, hey, dude, um, check out my video once I post this thing. And oops, that's a fat finger. Come on. And say, hey, what do you uh, what do you sell me one of these for? He might give me a discount. He probably won't. Look at that. You see that right there? Do the overwhelming response generated by the YouTube video. That's my buddy Eric, his YouTube video. Our standard lead time is three to five business days and has been extended to seven ten. Actually, the last time I looked at that, I think I think it said two to three weeks. So he's doing okay. He's doing that now. So I'm gonna put this video up. I'll email it to uh Senior uh Micronode over here. I don't know this guy. I can't remember this guy's name. But either way. Really cool device, small, compact, doesn't have a battery that I can tell. Um, but it does come with a USB cable to plug it directly in to power it via USB or to power it. You can see I've got this kind of jimmy rigged up here um, to power it via wall wart or via USB through the connector. And then uh, you can interface it. I guess you can you can interface it through the computer, which it is right now, because I had it connected via the terminal. But if I unplug the mini USB cable and go back to the... But I'm connected to it through my Wi-Fi now because it's got a built-in web server. So if I go in here and click on Dashboard again, it should, it should come up. Well, it's not refreshing there. Yeah, there you go. Dashboard. Yeah, so... I'm connected to it. I had to, you have to hardline into it to do the terminal emulator and go into the Linux configuration menu and set that configuration file to connect to your ambient Wi Fi. Once you have that set, then you can log into it via just typing nano spot in the browser and hitting enter as long as you're on the same network. Same way the open spot does. Except for the open spot, you don't have to pre configure it. All you do is plug it in the Ethernet. But if you're wanting to use Wi Fi, this is. I wouldn't say it's an easier solution. So, like I said, Linux scares some people. So maybe you're scared of Linux, maybe you're not. If you're okay with going through just like a 10-step process, and it li lays it out for you there in the manual, as you saw. If you're okay with doing that, then it's probably fine that you're, um, again, if you're going to use it at home, you're going to use it on the road, you may have to go set up, reset up that file. And you might be able to add multiple networks to that file. I don't know. Some of you who are more versed in Linux... You might be able to add a second line to say, or a second stanza in there to say multiple Wi-Fi networks. Here's the username, password, and SSID and all this kind of good stuff and, and save that file. And then it'll just look around and say, oh, there's one, oh, there's one, oh, there's, you know, and it'll connect to multiple networks. You can do that on a um, all-star image. An all-star image running on a Raspberry Pi, you can do that. You can set up multiple net multiple Wi-Fi networks so that you could travel from one place to another. It'll grab whatever Wi-Fi network it sees. So there's probably a way to do that in here. I didn't go deep enough into the manual to see if there was a way to do that in the manual. With Linux, it's possible. Pretty much anything's possible with Linux. But you gotta but you gotta know Linux. So all right guys, I'm babbled enough. Thanks for watching. Go check out my buddy Eric's video. Um, comment on this video and um, hope you enjoy the nano spot if you've got one and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback uh, go to check out my website livefromthehamshack.tv um, subscribe to me on YouTube check me out on Facebook fb.me forward slash ham radio 2 check me out on Patreon patreon.com forward slash ham radio and find me on Twitter and Instagram at hamradio2 dot dot spelled out dot zero. Thanks for watching 73. See you next time. This has been Ham Radio 2.0, a YouTube production by KC5HWB. Visit our website at www.livefromthehamshack.tv. Please also stop by our Facebook page at fb.me slash hamradio2. Be sure and subscribe here on YouTube to keep up with all the new videos that are posted nearly every Monday. 73s everyone and thanks for watching.